Good morning, friends. It's so nice to see you this morning. I hope everybody's had a good week. Wave at me if you have. Give a thumbs up if you had a good week. Good. Let's all take a deep breath and get ready for today's story. And let it out slowly. One more. And let's light the Christ candle to help us be ready. It doesn't want to light. There we go. And let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us each to hear your word in the story. Help us each hear the message that's meant especially for us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the city of Bethlehem, while Ruth once lived, her grandson Jesse lived, and Jesse had many sons. But Samuel, you heard about the prophet Samuel last week. Samuel came to Bethlehem to search for the new king. And he came to Jesse's house because God told him that's where the new king would be. Jesse brought out six of his sons, and Samuel met each one, and he went, this isn't the one. Jesse, do you have any more sons? And Jesse said, well, my youngest, David, is out tending the flocks in the field. So Samuel went out to the field, and he knew immediately that this young boy tending the sheep was the one God meant. And he took a horn full of oil, kind of like this oil in this bottle. And he anointed David to be king. Now, this was very confusing because there was already a king in the land, King Saul. But King Saul had changed. A, an evil spirit had taken hold of him. Still, David wouldn't become king until later when Saul died. Some of the people that worked with the king, as he got worse with his sickness, thought that maybe music would help. So they called for young David, and David brought his harp, and he played his harp and sang songs to soothe the king. Some of those song, songs you can find in the book of Psalms in the Bible. Now, in the land, there was a great war going on. The Philistines wanted all the land for themselves. And so the army of the Philistines and the army of the people of God lined up on the battlefield and a great tall man, almost like a giant named Goliath, came out to the middle of the field and challenged the, king, the king's army of the people of God to fight him. And none of the soldiers wanted to do that. But young David stepped forward and he said, I'll do it. And so they put the king's armor on David but he was still a boy and it was too big for him. So he cast the armor off and he took five smooth stones. One, two, three, four, five. And he took his slingshot and he took his staff. And he thought, I was able to protect my sheep and kill bears and lions. 
I can kill Goliath to protect my people. And he did. Now the people never forgot the bravery of young David. And as he got older, he became a soldier in the king's army. Saul had many sons too. His son, Jonathan, became close friends with David. Jonathan always wanted to help David and to protect him, even from his father, the king, for David had become a great soldier. And the people began to like David even better than the king. And this made the king furious. He was so jealous, he wanted to kill David. David's friend Jonathan tried to talk to his father and say, Father, David is a good man. But his father, the king, wouldn't listen. And so he told, John, he told David, you must leave. You need to go into hiding. And so the two friends had to say goodbye. Now Saul and all of his sons went to battle again with the Philistines. Only this time, they all were killed. A messenger came to tell David. And David was so sad to hear about his best friend. The messenger brought the king's crown to David. And all the people of Israel, all the tribes of Israel gathered in Hebron to crown him king, to proclaim him king and say, you will be the shepherd of our people. Now, David never forgot his best friend, Jonathan, and he took Jonathan's son into his home and gave him all of King Saul's lands. But the very first act that David did was he went to Jerusalem and took the city back from the Jebusites. So now there was a city of David in Bethlehem and a city of David in Jerusalem. Then David remembered that the Philistines had taken the Ark of the Covenant that carried God's word in it. And he went to battle with the Philistines and he defeated them and brought the altar back and danced before it and placed it in the tent where it had always been in the desert. And then David thought, now I want to build a beautiful house for God and, and to put the, all, the Ark of the Covenant in. Only God said, no, David, you're a king of war. One day your son will build that house for me. Well, in the spring of the year, when kings go to battle, one year David stayed in Jerusalem but he sent his army ahead and he saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. She was the wife of Uriah the Hittite, but David decided he wanted Bathsheba for himself. And so he sent Uriah the Hittite to the battlefront where he was killed. And then he married Bathsheba. Soon after, God sent Nathan the prophet to tell David a parable. This was the parable he told. He said, there once were two men who lived in the same town. There was a rich man and a poor man. The rich man had many sheep. The poor man had one little lamb. He loved that little lamb and treated it as a pet. He kept it in his house. He fed it from his plate. He treated it almost like a child. Now one day, the rich man had a visitor but he didn't want to kill any of his sheep 
So he took the poor man's sheep and he had it for dinner for the rich visitor. When David heard this story, he was furious with the rich man. He said, as God lives, that man deserves to die. He should have to pay back four times over what he took without any pity. But Nathan the prophet said to David, David, that rich man is you. God gave you everything, but you took Uriah's wife for yourself. David was so ashamed and he was filled with sorrow. And he was also afraid that he would die like Saul. He didn't die, but the first son that he and Bathsheba had did die. And then they were both filled with sorrow. But later they had another son. They named him Solomon. And when Solomon grew up, he became king and he built the house for God. Now, David was not a perfect king. He knew that he had made many mistakes, but he was sorry and he would go to God and tell him that he was sorry and God forgave him. David lived many, many years. And when he died of old age, they buried him in the city of Jerusalem. Now I wonder what part of this story did you like best? I wonder which part of the story of David is the most important part? Does anybody see themselves anywhere in this story? I wonder if there's any part of this story we could take out and still have the, all the important parts of the story of David. Okay, well, I wonder today what your response is going to be. You might want to find the story of David in the Bible and read about him. This, this is fairly short. The Bible part of the story about David is pretty long, but I bet you could read it with your parents. Maybe you'd like to write in your journal about um, David or about something in your life where you've had to face an enemy or um, make a big decision, or maybe someplace where you've helped someone to feel better like David did when he played the harp for the king. Several of you mentioned that you thought it was important when David became king, so I thought I would show you how you could easily make a crown for yourself. You can take a piece of paper, fold it in half, Can you see this? You cut it a slant, kind of like you're about to make a triangle, but don't go all the way to the bottom. Then come up, make a smaller triangle, and then go across. That doesn't look like a crown yet, does it? How about now? but this isn't gonna go all the way around. So now I have to see how wide that band is. And I'll go to the other side of my paper and cut all the way across. And then I could glue it together or staple it together and make it fit my head. And I could decorate with crayons or put stickers on it to make it look like it had jewels. There's lots of different things you could do. Maybe you want to use your blocks to build, um, to build an ark or to build the temple that Solomon built. Um, I'm going to just give you a few minutes to get started with your response time. 
and we'll come back in probably about five or six minutes. You might not have time to finish, but we can talk about what you're doing and then you can finish later. So enjoy your response time. I think I'm going to make a bookmark. I bet you're so surprised. <laughs> we always make bookmarks here, don't we? I made a bookmark and I put a crown on it. And remember I told you it's a very long story. It is in 1 Samuel 16 to 31, 2 Samuel and 1 Kings verses one and two. So there's a lot of Bible pages that tell about David. Yes. I am so glad that I got to be with you today. And do you think we can all pray together? Um, I'll start it and then you repeat after me, okay? Dear God, thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for bringing us together today. Help us to be faithful helpers like David. Help us to be faithful helpers like David. And let us remember that we don't have to be perfect. Let us remember that we do not have to be perfect. For God to love us. For God to love us. We just have to love God. We just have to love God. And we say this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we say this in Jesus' name. Amen. So great to see you today. I hope you have a wonderful week. And somebody else will teach next week, but I'll see you then. So I hope you'll wave at me.